All-in-One SEO Pack Tutorial for 2016. Hello and welcome. In this video session, I'm going to show you how to quickly use All-in-One SEO Pack for your WordPress site. When you log into your dashboard, under Plugins, if you were to press on Add New, search the plugin directory for All-in-One SEO Pack, we'll end up having the plugin we simply install and activate it. Once we do, we'll have general settings and feature manager. Let's press on all in one SEO. Let's also press on settings. As you can see, both takes us to same place. Let's press on feature manager to see where that takes us. That takes us here. I'm going to show you what's going on here as well in a second. Let's look at general settings. Canonical URLs are set by default. Anytime you are unsure about any setting or feature, you can press on question mark icon to bring out more insights. Or you can click the link to read the documentation for that particular setting. You have that check, canonical URLs are important. Enable custom canonical URLs you may like to check that out as well. I'm going to show you what that does when we have a check. Let me open up a sample page to show you. Let's edit our test home page. Here, as you can see, we have all these all-in-one SEO pack plugin settings on the pages itself or our blog posts whereby we can further customize so then, if I, let's imagine this here. Let me check that, check that field. Let me go towards the end and press on update options. Let me now refresh the page that I was editing before, which was my home page. Now you'll see, I will have a feature here for custom canonical URLs, as you can see. Now I can set different settings here if I want but that would never be smart so instead let's disable that by unchecking that box let's update the option if you're using SSLs then you may like to have this enabled SSL certificates installed that means you can view your site if you were to press as in request the page HTTPS colon and your domain name you may say you know what I just want to use that then well, you can leave it at all use original title leave it at disabled because I'm going to show you what's going on with it we have use schema.org markup now certain plugins like all-in-one SEO pack or Yoast they try to handle things that they're not designed to do, such as schema.org markup. I have created a very powerful plugin whereby you can have a site that is very complex as far as schema.org markup is concerned. But you may like to have that check if you want. Log important events related to this plugin. If you check this, it's going to generate a file whereby you can later on go and have a look at what's going on. Home title. If you leave it at default, it's going to come from settings, general dashboard settings for your WordPress site. It's basically going to pull out your site title. That's for the home page, or you can override it. to whatever that you want. But I think it's smart to actually leave it. Let's copy and paste it in there. So let me fly through instead of carrying on boring you. I'll just show you what's important. Let's paste that description. As you can see, it's going to give you a warning saying, you know what? Meta description that long is too long. Keep it around about 150 characters. 140, 150 is good enough. 
You don't have to go and try and count every single one of them, but 2016, 140, 150 is good enough, not 160, because we've got to think of the mobile devices as well, right? Use static front page instead. It's not smart to utilize the settings here. Instead, you can press on WordPress dashboard settings. Press on reading. Here you can set static front page for your home page and your blogs as well instead of using the plugin settings. Okay, let's take a look at title settings. Let's quickly get rid of all this blog title. Let's delete them. Yeah, delete them all. Whether you're using all in one SEO pack, whether you're using Yoast SEO pack, you should not have pipe symbol with a blog title and so on. Why? Because that's what Google recommends. Custom post types, you can basically leave all this here as it is, because that will depend on the theme that you're using. At the end of the day, posts and pages or custom post types, you can edit them through different methods instead of setting things here. Display settings to do with display, we can perhaps forget about that. And this may be of interest to you. Google Webmaster Tools verification. When you log into your search console and then find verification details by pressing the gear icon of your verified property, you can select HTML tag as verification method. Now, if you were to do that, what the plugin says to you to do is just grab that random code. Only grab this part though, nothing else. Just a unique ID for your search console property. And paste it in there. So this plugin can be used to verify your Google Webmaster Tools account. Google Settings, Google Plus Default Profile. In 2016, Google has discontinued author information. They tested it out, but in 2016, it's basically bye-bye then. So I don't know why these plugins sometimes leave things in place when they know it's not spotted anymore. So basically ignore that stuff. Google Analytics ID. When you log into your Google Analytics account, press on Admin, Property Settings, it's asking you for your tracking ID to place it in there. But that's actually not smart either because you should be setting that up manually. First of all, let's press on tracking info, tracking code. Here, we can grab all this. Let's go and do that. Let's log into our dashboard, go to appearance, press on editor. Yeah, some themes on rare occasions, they don't have that option for editing theme files. If that's the case, simply log into your web hosting manager, press on File, File Manager, browse into WP Content, browse into Themes, and locate the theme that you're using. Find header.php. Let's right click and press on edit. Here you can find head portion and you can find the end of head portion. Let's search first and just paste that tracking code manually instead of letting the plugin do it. Because when you do that, press on property settings in Google Analytics and here you can read more about enabling different features as well as use enhanced link attribution. Let's press on that link to see how we can use that. It's telling us to add 
this line of code before page view is sent as you can see now you can safely save this document and you have your Google Analytics tracking installed as well as you can now tap into advanced features of analytics but nonetheless if you don't want to bother with all that stuff you can simply grab your tracking ID and place it in there and let the plugin do that for you yes use universal analytics always because that's in 2016 that's what we need to use you can get into these I'm not going to cover these these are advanced methods but nonetheless once again you shouldn't let plugins to do that all for you or else you'll get wrong data shown to you no index settings and this is interesting you may like to utilize some of these but you have to be thoughtful what I recommend is to be on the safe side you can say data archive should be no index author archives for small business sites should be no index but if you have a membership site then you can uncheck that because you want those authored profiles to be indexed if you have a site like membership site that has other subscribers logging in and so on tag archives shouldn't be indexed search results page shouldn't be indexed 404 you can basically forget that because Google doesn't index that use no index for paginated yes you should check that as well use no follow for paginated posts no leave that default exclude site from open directory project okay leave it default or if you check it basically there is one line of extra code which you do not need in 2016 advanced settings yes you can perhaps leave most of these at default you should not be you know inserting things here but you can surely read more about it to include additional codes if you want it will show up in the source code keyword settings you can basically disable that let's press on update options now that's updated anytime you are unsure about something or you want to redo certain things you can press on reset all settings to reset everything to default settings so that's always available which I think is actually very smart so now while we're here let's go and look at posts or pages let's look at posts let's press on edit while here let me also open up a sample page let's press on edit for that as well to show you what the plugin does it allows you to overwrite things here and this is where the action happens this is where you need to really go in there and create unique titles and descriptions for the posts that you have or for the pages that you have the rest of these elements here you can basically ignore all this stuff just focus on title and description because we've said everything else using other settings before okay so always focus on that so let me close these up because I want to show you let's press on performance here you can basically leave all this at default don't go trying to increase these but the options are there for you because most things will depend on the server settings instead of the the dashboard settings XML sitemaps absolutely important let's press on that each time we activate an advanced feature we'll have a link on the menu here let's press on that now here basically you let this plugin to generate sitemaps the only setting that is of importance here is this one here but surely you can set the priorities which are obviously great for certain parts of your WordPress site 
frequency let's say yeah this is important as well if you're creating posts and they don't change often then you may perhaps stay on the safe side say monthly for home page let's say changes daily let's say for posts it's monthly or weekly taxonomies let's leave that on the safe side monthly home page priority settings should be one posts should be five taxonomy should be let's say four or you can increase or decrease excluded yes you can exclude certain pages from your sitemap which is absolutely useful and you will definitely need it as your wordpress site grows basically it's saying to us go and grab page slug or page id let's go take a look at pages the let's go sample page slug is this id is this here then you have different settings to have at the end of the day for your sitemaps you have to have posts minimum and your pages and depending on your wordpress setup you may have different categories that needs to be in sitemaps as well it's in custom post types and all that stuff okay well notify search engines it's not smart because if anything you should go to google webmaster tools and submit your sitemap view your sitemap is your sitemap what you need to submit is this extension here let's go press on a verified property let's press on crawl let's press on sitemaps here we can add and test a sitemap it's always smart to test it first to see if all like if google can see what is within the sitemap and then once the test is completed then you can submit your sitemap that basically covers the sitemap side of things because once google knows of your sitemap it's going to work out when to come and crawl and request your sitemap let's press on feature manager again robots.txt file will definitely be of interest to you let's press on that let's go to rank your blog let's scroll down the bottom press on public assets let's go and grab the sample robots.txt file let's download that let's open this file here let's copy all Control A, Control C on my keyboard. Let me paste all that in there. Let's delete that. Okay, my honest mistake. Let's press on Feature Manager. Let's go to File Editor. Let's activate that. Let's press on File Editor. Here we can edit our robots.txt file. In here, let's remove all these comments simple you change your url here and give the path to your sitemap that this plugin has generated you can watch the tutorial for creating robots.txt file for wordpress you can read through the notices and to be on the safe side you can just have it like so and then build upon it and then you would simply update your robots.txt file i'm not going to cover that because this video session covers that as well you may like to watch it if you want file editor.htxs file now this what we're seeing here is what is needed for WordPress tour. You can optimize this file if you want. 
but it is a very complex thing to do so. Nonetheless, Ranker does have videos showing you how to do that as well. Let's press on Feature Manager. Video Sitemap. I don't know if you'd like to utilize it. If you have videos, that's great. If you're embedding YouTube videos, then definitely check out the plugins that I have that adds great stuff for YouTube embeds as well. Importer Exporter, let's activate that. Now, what if you're using Yoast and now you want to move to All-in-One? You can export import things, as in settings, as you can see, okay? Let's press on X, import, let's press on that. Import, let's choose file, and it'll be settings from a different plugin. That's what it's saying here. Let's press on feature manager, bad bot blocker, don't activate that, because it doesn't work like that on internet. That's why they're called bad bots. Now yeah, we've got, yes, performance we've looked at, social, meta, yeah, you may like to activate it. If you do, then you have all these settings for your social profiles, which in 2016, you definitely will find it of use to you. At the end of the day, Using all-in-one SEO pack can be of use to you. Simply follow these best practices. And remember, what is more important is the settings that you create on individual posts or pages. As in title and description and so on. Robots.txt file is important. Sitemaps are absolutely important. And advanced settings for .htxs file may improve performance of your WordPress site. In either case, I thank you very much for learning with me and I'm wishing your WordPress site greatness on internet. And I'll talk with you in the next video session.